Republican governor of Ohio, John Kasich. I think if my math is right, um, you served 18 years in the House, so you know how these things work. Tell me what yeah, you're watching for. <laughs> <laughs> and and what do you make of, of the fact that, you know, both uh, Steve Scalise and um, Kevin McCarthy voted for for Jordan here? Well, that, that doesn't surprise me. But what there's one that I noticed, and I haven't looked at the entire list. Kay Granger is, I served with Kay. She's uh, terrific. She's uh, uh, the chairperson of the Appropriations Committee. She voted against him. Now, she's very conservative. She's from uh, Fort Worth, Texas. I think, Chris, part of the reason why she voted no is because I think she has seen Jordan stick, put a stick in the spokes of her bicycle. In other words, she's not sure that, in fact, we can move forward uh, you know, with the budgeting appropriations that we need to do, the funding of the government. And I think she's skeptical of his ability to uh, to kind of lead the conference. There's some other interesting here, uh, things here that I saw that members of the Hispanic caucus voted against them. I mean, does that have something to do perhaps against the hard line on immigration? So you have a mixture of some conservatives, some moderates, and, um, you know, you're 20 votes down. It's pretty tough. Now, can they flip a Kay Granger? Can they flip these people? I suppose they they could try. I a uh, number of people that I've been talking to say, well, it's over. Well, I said, no, it's not over until it's over. Uh, the idea that McHenry could be empowered to carry on for a certain period of time, I think is something that is an option. And if it involves uh, having some of the Democrats support him, uh, maybe they're now looking to say, what is the best thing for us to do in the House of Representatives to be able to advance an agenda? The agenda, the critical agenda, what are we doing with Ukraine? What are we doing with Israel? These are critical things. And Chris, the United States of America, when we create vacuums, when we don't know what we're doing, we invite bad forces to fill that vacuum. And I think it's critical that those members of the House realize we have to have somebody that's going to be able to get along with Joe Biden, get along with the Senate, work with Republicans, have a conservative agenda, but a realistic agenda. You know, I was there when we when we passed the uh, the balanced budget act and we actually balanced the budget four years in a row. It meant there had to be some compromise. But the economy boomed. Things were better in America. Well, I mean, we need a little bit of that. And I think part of the opposition to Jordan is in people's guts that they say, you know, I'm not sure that he can unify us and lead us. But again, it's not over until it's over, Chris. But if you take the acting speaker if, and, and you say, OK, we're going to come up with some way so that we can keep moving while we figure this out, does that send a different message? I mean, there still isn't any House speaker who's there because a majority of his fellow Republicans support him and someone who, as you rightfully point out, can work with Democrats. I mean, Jim Jordan is someone who voted to certify elections in places like Arizona and Pennsylvania for yeah. or, or to reject certification of elections, uh, who <laughs> has been somebody who, after January 6th, made it very clear of his support for Donald Trump, continues to make it very clear, as Trump does for him. So yeah. where, do, where does that leave us? If Chris, Chris, let's let me let me ask this. Fund where are the Democrats? You know, they say the Democrats are enjoying watching the Republicans struggle. Well, what price are we paying as a country because of that? I've, I've said now since the election of McCarthy all the way back there, I said, look, getting a coalition of Republicans, you know, and Republicans are going to call the tune. You, you can make some side deals with the Democrats to give them a few more seats, a little better representation. But at the end, you have a Republican speaker. You have a you have a conservative led party in the House, but you have a coalition with Democrats. Ronald Reagan created book with Democrats to pass his economic plan. When I was in the Congress, we worked all the time with the blue dog Democrats. It wasn't like we were selling out our philosophy and we didn't get them all the time. But but what you really want to do is you want to marginalize the extremists. So if you have four or five or six people who say no way, no how. And go on the other side. And, you know, this Hakeem Jeffries, the minority leader, he ought to be he ought to be actively involved in discussions. I'm told that there have been discussions uh, between Republicans and Democrats. I've talked to members who have told me that that's something they've been interested in. But they also told me is 
There's not been enough pain to see that through. Think about this. Think about what's raging around the world. And and it's it's like watching, you know, I mentioned to somebody today, well, maybe too bad John Belushi isn't there coming out of Animal, Animal House to try to run the place. I mean, it's really unbelievable. And the world, the world needs to know where we are. We need stability. And so, look, Jordan is what they're doing right now is they're whipping people They're When I say whipping, I don't mean literally. <laughs> they're talking to people and trying to pressure them to vote for Jordan. You probably have, have uh, Scalise doing some of it. Got a whip team doing it. Um, can they move these people? If they can't, then I think they need to look for another approach. And empowering uh, McHenry will require some Democrat support. So what? And then we'll see where things go. But we need stability in the House. We need stability in America. We need a strong America now more than ever before. So let's talk about the implications for both aid for Ukraine, but also Israel. Uh, we've seen what's happening on the ground there. We know the growing concerns about a wider conflict. And let's not forget, as um, Steve Kornacki pointed out, while 20 votes didn't go for Jim Jordan right now, 19 didn't go uh, for the last speaker. And that went on for five excruciating days before Kevin McCarthy yeah. was elected. Do we have five days when you look at what's happening on the ground in Israel right now, Governor? Well, look, I mean, first of all, in regard to that situation, the Israelis are facing an extremely difficult situation. They want to move and they want to be in a position to be able to totally dismantle Hamas. When you talk to people who are experts, and I served on the Defense Committee for 18 years, when you look at the at the tunnels that you have in Gaza City, which is clearly one of their focuses, uh, Chris, I have to tell you, people remember Fallujah over in Iraq and the hand-to-hand -hand street, house-to-house -house fighting and the casualties. Israel has to has to be able to stand up and dismantle uh, Hamas, but they want to be in a position where they do it in a way in which they don't punish civilians. It's very difficult to do, but that is their goal. The large scale invasion has been held off because I think they're trying to figure out the best strategy for being able to accomplish those goals without igniting a larger conflict in the world. So where do we fit in? I'm glad to see what Tony Blinken's been in the Middle East. He's been all over talks with Egypt. There's been talks, uh, um, you know, on, with leaders of the West Bank. There have been talks with um, with Saudi Arabia. I'm glad the president's going. And he's not only going to meet with Netanyahu and the Israeli cabinet, but he's also going to go to Egypt to see if they can open up a, a passage to get people uh, out of Gaza, out of the south of Gaza. So it's 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 really, really uh, difficult, Chris, because you have Hezbollah, who has sophisticated weapons up in the north. So Israelis trying to do what they need to do. I think everybody in the world really knows, except for a handful, that Israel has to act and they have to be tough and they have to win. But then the question is, how do you get that done in an effective way? Not only using special forces, but also your regular military. It's a real challenge. And the United States of America, I guarantee you, that our intelligence community is helping them. JSOC, uh, Joint Special Operations Command, probably involved. I don't know this, but I assume that they're there. There's a lot of U.S. intelligence. We're moving these carriers over there to send the message. But we can't have the House of Representatives walking around in circles. So what I say is if Jordan can't come back and get the votes, withdraw, empower McHenry, involve some Democrats, and let's call it a day. All right. I also want to bring in the senior writer at the dispatch, David Drucker. 